class on this optimization technique today we will discuss about how we can solve the KKT conditions when there is only one constant here so we will solve the nonlinear programming problem myself dr gar working in the school of mathematics tapal institute of india so in the last lecture what we have seen is that we will uh, discuss uh, uh, we discuss the necessary and the sufficient condition for the nonlinear programming problem that is called as the KKT condition Karush Koo Tucker conditions are there so we will summarize this uh, before start this lecture uh, this is the conclusion for the necessary condition you just remember this how you can write the KKT condition for them so if your problem is maximization or either of the minimization what are the necessary condition for them is this is there or instead of them what we, you can do is you can firstly define the value of the L that is a Lagrange multiplier F minus lambda times of the GI's and then you have to find their this is the partial derivative of first one is 0 lambda i of g i is 0 what is a g i is you can write uh, this as g minus b of 0 then this complete is my g since my problem is maximization so you can write this as a greater than or equal to 0 and whatever the domain is there so you can see here as of this else if you want to write like this way there is a no problem so since here is the problem is maximization so you have to use lambda is greater than 0 if your problem is minimization you can write as a less than 0 so these are my uh, necessary conditions are there we will see how you can write them in terms of the numerical examples also and what is the summary of the sufficient condition is that there are it may be of the four kind of the uh, nonlinear programming problem in which the problem is either of the maximization type but the constants are of either less than or greater than sign always remember that uh, whenever the problem is maximization problem you always you have to prove that the function is my concave so look at that case 1 and case 2 the function will always be the concave while in case of the minimization problem you have to prove that function is my convex how you can prove that function is convex and concave you can use the either the Hessian matrix we have discussed that either you can use the eigenvalue concept that we also discussed in our previous video related to the Hessian matrix you can browse them on the other hand if you prove if your constants are less than sign then you have to prove that the con uh, constants are my convex function if and on the other hand if my functions are of constants are greater than sign you have to prove that it's a concave how you can prove that function is convex and concave you can also remember that uh, how you can prove that function is convex and concave you can draw the Hessian matrix and find their principal minors are there if all the principal minors are greater than zero then we can say it's a minimum as well as the convex on the other hand if my uh, when you set is a concave if they are of the opposite sign that is alternating sign but make sure that the first principal minor is negative then we can say it's a concave function otherwise you can simply remember these tips uh, a function which is convex and concave both that is called as the linear function so it means if i say 2x plus this is here it is a convex as well as concave both so since uh, x square so uh, since the graph of this is a u shape so every u shape function is a concave con convex function so let's uh, discuss certain examples are there and you may remember this remark in order to prove that the function is my minimization problem you have to prove function is convex if your problem is maximization you have to prove that function is my concave by using hessian matrix are there. so let's discuss this one so solve this nonlinear programming problem look at that the constants are my less than sign so it means this nonlinear programming problem is solved with the help of the KKT condition. It can't be solved with the help of Lagrangian multiplier. Why? Because Lagrangian multiplier is applicable only when constants are equality. Now, since it is a KKT condition applicable, so what is the necessary and the sufficient condition is? My problem is maximization, so you have to prove that the function f of x, this is my function f of x, need to be concave, and the constants is my convex. So you can see that this is my convex. Why? because this is my linear function and we already described in the comments that a uh, function whenever the linear function is always be a convex that part is true now we have to prove it's a concave how you can prove we can draw, uh, drive the Hessian matrix here what is the size of the matrix it's x, x1 and x2 so it's a 2 plus 2 so for this function can you find this partial derivative with respect to x1 twice it will be minus 0.8 the x1 and x2 will be 0 it is 0 and it is minus 4 so you can see here now what is the first principal minor that is the first matrix what is the second principal minor is you can calculate the minus what is the second principal minor is that is nothing but my determinant of this 
So first one is less than zero, second one is greater than zero. It means they are alternating sign. If you if you have the alternating sign, the first one must be less than zero. So it is true. So therefore, it is my concave. So once it is concave, so it will give you the maximum value. Now second condition you have to satisfy. This is concave. So now you have to prove this is convex. So there is nothing to prove. You can simply write that. Since this is a linear form, and we know that every linear function is convex, therefore the KKD conditions are the sufficient condition for the maximization. Now, how this is the sufficient condition? Now, how you can find the necessary condition for this function? We can define the value of the L Lagrangian function f of x minus lambda of g. Here I call as g as 2x1 plus x2 minus of 10 is less than equal to zero. Now, what are the necessary conditions? Are there? Look at here. So this condition it means this partial derivative of one zero, partial derivative of x two is zero. What is the meaning of lambda g is? Okay, uh, we will write one by one. So this is the partial derivative of this with respect to x one and x two zero. What is the meaning of lambda g? So this is one. What is the constant is? Two x one plus x two minus of ten is zero. This is my equation number third. What is the lambda is zero? How many lambdas are there? Only one. What is the g is there? This is a constant, so you can write the constant as such. And this is a non-negativity condition. Now, from these six equations, you can see that how many variables are there? It is x1, x2, and lambda. There are the three variables are there. So your task is to calculate this value. How you can calculate this value? So I will tell you very simple manner. So there will be the two cases arise. So we put a restriction on this lambda. Either lambda is zero or it is non-zero. So we will apply this technique throughout the examples. Are there? We will discuss the three example in this video. Lambda is zero or non-zero. So we will discuss the first case. What will happen if lambda is zero? So from equation one and two, can you find the value of the x one and x two? If lambda is zero, so x one will be my point four point five and say. Now is this value satisfy all these six equations? So you can see whether this satisfies this. This satisfies six. Yes. Is x one four point five and x is four satisfy this condition? No. So you can see that two times four point five plus four is not be less than of the ten. So it means this does not satisfy equation number five. Hence this case is discarded. It means lambda is non-zero. Now case second. What will happen if lambda is non-zero? So which which equation will satisfy? Look at this. Third equation. If lambda is non-zero, it means 2x1 plus x2 will be 10. So it means now your task is to find x1 and x2. You can use the equation number one and two. Can you find the value of the x1 from the equation number one and two? From equation one, you can find the value of x1. From equation two, you can find the value of x2. By substituting this value of x1 and x2 here, you will get the value of lambda as four. Is this value satisfied here? Yes. This value is satisfied. Now, once you will get the value of lambda, you can substitute the value of lambda here. You get the x1 and x2 here. Now, check whether this x1 and x2 satisfy this condition. Yes. Is this satisfy this two times of the this? This is seven plus of three. This is ten satisfied. So this point satisfy all the conditions. So what is the required answer? Is x1 is my 3.5, x2 is 3, lambda is my 0.4 is the optimal solution. And this value of yet you can find after substituting in the given answer. Look at the same approach. We we'll look look at the second example. Again, my now this time my problem is minimization and constants are less than. So since my problem is minimization, so your task is to prove the function is convex, and constants are my less than sign. So again, you need to prove it's a less convex. Again, you can see this is my linear function. So it means this is automatically a convex. How you can prove it's a convex? We will derive the Hessian matrix, partial derivative. What is the first principal minor is one by x square. It's a greater than zero always. Whatever the value of x one, d two is again it's a square value. It's always greater than zero. Now both the principal minors are greater than zero. It means my function is uh, function is my convex and it will give you a minimum value. Therefore, uh, and second value is. This one is a linear function, so it will always be a convex function. So hence, the KKT condition will be the necessary and the sufficient. 
how you define the necessary condition you can define the lagrange multiplier that is f of x minus lambda times of g and what are these conditions are there here so what is the meaning of this is you have to derive this as a partial derivative with respect to x1 partial derivative with respect to x2 are zero so you can see what is the partial what is the this condition is minus 1 by x1 minus of lambda 1 is zero so you can see here this is this what is the meaning of this is lambda times of g is zero means lambda times of this constraints look at that this since my problem is minimization so this condition is lambda is less than zero and this is nothing but my this condition always be remember this is nothing but my this searching space you can see the last two condition so i put these six equations are there now how many variables are there again there are the three unknown parameters so your task is to find this by using again two cases what will happen if lambda is zero so from the equation one and two what will happen minus of x1 is zero it means x1 is either minus infinity or plus infinity but look at that if x1 is minus infinity it will not satisfy it here so we get x1 is infinity and x2 is infinity so it satisfies this equation whether x1 and x2 satisfy this one no because infinity plus infinity can't be less than of the two so it it means this x1 and x2 violates the equation number five hence this case is discarded so we will discuss the second case what will happen if lambda is non zero so from equation 3 it means x1 plus x2 minus of 2 is zero now your task is to find the value of x1 and x2 from equation 1 can you find the equation of, uh, a value of the x1 yes you can easily find this is nothing but minus x1 and from equation 2 you can find the value of here after finding the value of x1 x2 you can substitute the value here you can find the value of lambda easily as minus 1 is this satisfied here yes so after finding this you can substitute the value here you will get x1 and x2 this check whether this x1 x2 satisfy this equation yes check whether this satisfy this yes so it means this satisfied all the necessary conditions hence the optimal solution is x1 will be my 1 x2 will be my 2 lambda 1 is my minus 1 and the value of the optimal is what is my objective function is minus log x1 minus log x2 you can see the minimum value is zero look at one more example on the same track now problem is my maximization again this is my less than zero so again we can apply the same technique since problem is my maximization your task is to prove if a concave how you can prove concave we will use the hessian matrix so uh, you can compute as as a either as a uh, principal minor also you can check as a eigen value approach so what are the eigen value of this since, since this is the diagonal values so both are of the less than zero it means my function is concave else you can find the principal minus d1 is a less than zero d2 is my positive since they are opposite sign but starting from the first one is negative so hence it is my concave second condition you have to prove that whether it's a convex or concave so since this is my linear function so it means your your task is to prove is a concave so every linear function is my convex so hence the kkd condition satisfy necessary and sufficient for now how you find the necessary condition you have to define the lagrange function from here now what are the necessary condition for the maximization is you have to write this since my problem is maximization lambda will be greater than 0 always remember partial derivative lambda g 0 and this is nothing but my this constraints so what is the meaning of this is you have to find their partial derivative look at that this is 0 this condition is corresponding to lambda g is 0 this is my g complete lambda times of g problem is maximization here and the last two conditions are my here again you can see how many unknown parameters are there there are the three so again we will apply start with lambda is zero or non zero what will happen if lambda is zero from equation 1 and 2 can you find the value of x1 and x2 yes you can easily find that that will be nothing but 4 and 5 check whether this satisfied or not so this is satisfied but this is not satisfied 12 plus 10 is not be here so it means this case is discarded but make sure that if this condition is satisfied then there is no need to check whether uh, there is no need to check the case number 2 okay so because uh, this problem is my convex so you need to solve 
uh, only those cases which will get the optimal solution. If you get the optimal solution here, then there is no need to check whether this condition is satisfied or not. For example, if I say x1 is my 1, x2 is my 1. So can this solution be satisfied here? Yes. So there is no need to solve this case number 2. So it means this is my optimal solution. Anyhow, now in this case it is not satisfied. So we will proceed in that case number 2. What will happen if lambda is non-zero? From here you will get this. How you find the value of x1 and x2? From the equation number 1 and 2 you can find the value of the x1. You can find the value of x2 like here. You can see from here. Substitute this value in this equation you will get the value of lambda as here. Now this is positive, it's satisfied here. Substitute this value of x1 here in x2, you will get the x1 and x2 here. You can simplify that, this is satisfied, this is also satisfied, so it satisfies all the necessary condition. Hence, the optimal solution will be this one. So this is the required answer. Make sure that you can even start the case 2 only, you can forget the case 1. So I just simply suggest that you have to, if if uh, if there are the two cases, uh, if you can start any one of them, if you get the optimal solution, there is no need to start the case number two again. So this is a simple way you can solve this uh, KKT condition. In the next lecture, we will see how we can solve when there are the two constants. We will follow the same approach uh, in the next lecture also. So stay tuned with them. Till then, you can simply browse this link for more updated videos on the optimization technique. Best of luck students. Happy learning.